The Nature of Consciousness. Disciplines like religion and philosophy get to ask the big why questions. Why do we exist? Why is there something rather than nothing? What is real? Usually science asks questions on a much smaller scale, but as a cognitive scientist, I also get to ask questions about one of the big mysteries of the universe. Like, how does the brain give rise to consciousness? The brain is a miraculous organ in its own right. Billions of neurons or nerve cells, each one of which can have thousands of synaptic connections to other cells. So trillions of circuits, like a supercomputer, but more wondrous than any computer that's been developed up to this point. For example, up to now, it's the only computer that gives rise to self-awareness. And what's really miraculous about our experience is that we can't experience the outside world directly. Our brain takes in information through the senses and organizes and interprets that information in order to give rise to our conscious experience. But the problem is, most of that data that comes into the brain is ambiguous. So it has to be interpreted in order to give it meaning. And this interpretation is based on things like our previous experience, our belief system, our prejudices, our biases. So in many ways, we all have our own unique view of reality shaped by our own unique experiences and belief systems. For example, this is one of the reasons why our research has shown that we have much better recognition for faces of members of our own race and gender, because we have more practice with those of our own gender, of our own race. Research also shows that our biases and prejudices can distort memory, which is why eyewitness testimony is so unreliable. So because we have this unique view of reality that's different from anyone else, our own private reality, we can often misinterpret what we're experiencing. And this can give rise to misperceptions or illusions and this happens much more often than you might expect. In fact, our mechanisms of perception are set up to make it more difficult to see things that contradict our beliefs. This is one reason why prejudices and biases of any kind are so difficult to eradicate. Because we are experiencing the world through our own conceptual lens, our own conceptual prism, the science of consciousness, particularly as practiced by ancient traditions in the East, recommend that we actually study our conscious awareness. We can mindfully study the nature of our beliefs, the nature of our expectancies. We can do this through practices like self-reflection, meditation, and contemplation. And these ancient sciences of consciousness say that this can lead to a state of freedom where we can see beyond the limiting confines of our conceptual universe. If we can do these kinds of practices, one of the things that could happen is we might start to be able to understand one another better. And in these times where the world is so full of division and distrust and fear, this could perhaps allow people to understand one another better, both on a personal and a global scale. And it could bring about a more peaceful existence. Thank you. So my intention in talking about the nature of consciousness was twofold. One is, I want to share the sense of wonder that I have when I consider the complexity of the brain. The brain is a miraculous organ in its own right. Billions of neurons or nerve cells, each one of which can have thousands of synaptic connections to other cells. 
and the miracle, the fact that we are aware of ourselves in the universe, uh, which to me seems miraculous. The science of consciousness, particularly as practiced by ancient traditions in the East, recommend that we actually study our conscious awareness. The other intention I had was to remind those of us in Western science in particular that people have been considering these phenomena for ages and that there's a lot of collective wisdom in the world about the nature of consciousness and ways in which people can experience greater depth of their own conscious experience. So those are the two things I had in mind. Thank you.